happened this so far and what is the expectation out of this training why would you why would you le- why would you uh, learn this uh, technology uh, starting from chandra yeah hello you need to unmute yourself hello yes. can you hear me yes, i can hear you yes well this is essay this is essay here hi essay good morning yeah hello I'm, i i know i've spoken to you um a few times now on whatsapp so um um, I'm, I'm actually here in the UK. Uh, the time now mm-hmm. is six o'clock, just gone six o'clock. So uh, the reason why um, I already work in IT, but I do more of the Apple side of things, um, Apple infrastructure. And I have worked with servers as well, Windows Server, but I haven't really worked with SCCM. So what I've done so far by myself is I've successfully installed SCCM and uh, the SQL Server. Uh, but I'm mm-hmm. having issues with um, issues with distribution points, um, issues with other aspects within SSCM that I, you know, I feel now it's not something I can do by myself, and I need someone to assist me like you, who has many years' experience. So this is the reason why I've come on this course. Um, I've spoken to your colleague Shrinivva, Shrini- I believe. Hmm. Well, he yes. said to me, yeah, this is something you can help with. And this is why I want to get to SCCM. Um, I know it's something that's quite hot on the market right now. And um, employers are asking for people that have SCCM experience. So I really want to learn this. Right. Very good. Thank you for the introduction and uh, your expectation. Uh, so I understood your requirement we will uh, definitely assist you with the same don't worry about it okay, okay. And just to um, add to as well um, yeah. in tune also in tune no, not on the sec i'm in tune as well yes in tune uh in tune is also included in this course don't okay don't worry about it okay yeah now we have a uh, um, few more people chandra would you introduce yourself you need to unmute yourself I see you are muted. Uh, hi, sir. Actually, I am uh, Chandra from Bangalore. Currently, I am working at Every India Private Limited as a system admin. Uh, yeah, even I am working on SSCM also, but I don't have full control of SSCM. Uh, I have only access read only. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, my day uh, to day activities, uh, I mean, initiating OIS and uh, pushing software uh, through SSCM. Uh, so I need SSCM because of for that reason uh, I'm, uh, I'm interested to join SSCM. Okay, so you would like to yes. deep dive and uh, understand yeah. all the yeah, under, all of SSCM so that yes sir yes okay. sir because of that reason uh, okay sure. I would like to join. Don't worry about it. Yes, this this course is designed in such a way that you will be able to understand each and every uh, terminology and you will easily be able to handle all the requirements and requests which is coming from uh, you know your management or anyone else in in your company and also you will be able to troubleshoot SSCM related issues okay 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 sir, sir, sir. okay uh, yeah, sure. harry hello harry you there Hello. Yeah. Hello. Harry. Harry. Uh, uh, yes. Me? You need to unmute yourself. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hi. Good morning, Harry. everyone. Your voice is a little bit low. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello. Harry. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm Hari Hari Kishan. I yes, mean, I'm from Hyder- Hyderabad. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, basically, I mean, uh, my profile is I mean, lead systems engineer. Okay, I'm working in Triangle. Hello? 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 Yes, sir. Hello? Hello? Yes, we are listening. Go ahead. Yeah. 
actually uh, basically my profile is a lead systems engineer and uh, earlier i worked in uh, ibm so in the big fix environment so but current uh, my organization is uh, i mean switch it to uh, big fix to ssm okay so i need some ha hands on experience so because of only i mean uh, i want to learn i mean ssm hello yes hari thank you for the introduction uh, so basically you are your infrastructure your your company has now uh, moved from ibm big fix to ssm so that's the reason you would like to learn this technology right yes, yeah okay Ro rohit uh hi everyone uh, i'm from mumbai and uh, i'm having a experience of 4 years in it so my basic experience was like uh, working on active directory platform but uh, recently i got promoted to switch to sscm profile uh, where i'm be leading the entire sscm and i am the only uh, one person who will handle the sscm in my project because we recently okay. got this project to my organization and uh, it was from other vendor but due to some problems okay. the contract had con uh, got cancelled and uh, that project has been shifted to my team so i'm the only person who have to handle the ssm so that's why i'm eager to work on it and it is already settled up uh, but there are many issues in the current uh, scenario so uh, okay. i'm having all the access on ssm but uh, don't have the enough knowledge to troubleshoot the issue so that's why i'm joining this course okay so ssm is already there and uh, it is already implemented and you have all the access yes. but you need to yeah. learn more more on this so that you will be able to uh, yeah, so, you know start using it in day to day uh, operation yeah. task so, so there are many issues related to ost and i have to take care about the uh, i'm like uh, i have got the deadline for uh, sscm upgradation to 1902 and uh, package deployment issues so i have to troubleshoot and i have to resolve those okay very good don't worry about it i'll definitely assist you with the same shakti so. Hey Shakti, you you need to unmute yourself. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm there. Hey guys, I'm Shakti. I'm from Switzerland. Living, uh, I'm Indian. Living in Switzerland since over six years now. Um, I work as a system administrator in a company uh, where they make grinding machines, and I have been in the position of system administrator for now five years. I've done certain Microsoft certifications from self-learning and Soon I'm taking over the position of uh, client management, uh, wherein I will be taking care of the entire SCCM. I do already work since four years with SCCM. However, I don't know how the entire configuration is and how it's entirely set it up, how it actually runs in the background, what it actually accesses and stuff like that. I just have the access to push um, deployment um, just like uh, just like administering however not the real knowledge about the entire background um, I don't have 100% administrator rights I have limited administrator rights on the SSCM and soon I'm taking over this position wherein I will be administering the SSCM and I expect yeah that in tune and certain things which are covered in this course to learn them get the more detailed information about it yeah and excited to start the course okay great so you said you are working on SSCM for the past four years right exactly yes Okay, so in the last four years, you have worked on which uh, which uh, component in SSM on all or just a, like application deployment or patches deployment or something? Application deployment, patches deployment. Okay, yeah. okay, very good. Great. Uh, let me uh, let me share my screen, guys. Let me know if you guys see my screen. Can anyone confirm? Are you able to see my screen? Uh, yes, uh, I'm able yes, to see you. Okay, guys. 
So a very warm welcome to this Microsoft System Center Config Manager online session. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself. My name is Kashif. I am from India. I have a, a total 13 years of practical IT experience. I have worked on almost all the versions of SCCM starting from SMS 2003 and uh, 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 I am uh, uh, training uh, people for the past five years now and I have trained more than 8,000 students globally. I am a CCNA, MCTS, MCSA, MCSC certified professional. Uh, these are my expertise, my primary and core uh, expertise. Uh, uh, my primary course expertise is on SCCM and uh, Active Directory. Apart from SCCM Active Directory, I have knowledge on Intune, Application Packaging, Azure, PowerShell and uh, I am a BSc IT graduate. I completed my graduation from Mumbai University. So I worked on SCCM level two, uh, level one, level two, level three teams, and now I'm working as SCCM architect, wherein I uh, need to, uh, you know, uh, implement SCCM on companies now. I have deployed SCCM to more than 35 companies so far. So that's about me, guys. I uh, am now working as architect plus the uh, the the SCCM trainer uh, side by side clear so that's about me now we'll talk about the duration of this training since we are doing weekend session so weekend will be uh, three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday so as I mentioned here 180 minutes on Saturday and Sunday and that's gonna take you like six weekends to finish all the topics 12 days to finish uh, all the topics I, I i hope you guys have gone through the course content if not then i'll forward the course content to you guys okay i'm also doing weekday session so weekdays is basically one and a half hour session on daily basis monday to friday and that takes 25 to 28 days to finish all the topics so that is the duration of this training so we are focusing on weekend because we will be doing on saturday and sunday only now let's talk about sccm historical details sccm was not sccm before it was sms system management server it started in 1994 like 25 years back so from microsoft microsoft is like the vendor of this product they started in 1994 and they 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 named this product as sms 1.0 later on in 1999 sms 2.0 then 2003 they released sms 2003 with multiple versions like sms 2003 sp1 sp2 and all then they changed the name from 2007 from sms to sccm sccm is basically system center system center is like a family name inside that family you have config manager as the product name so inside system center you have multiple other products like uh, scom scvm scsm multiple other products are, are there so one sccm is also one of the products inside system center okay so then don't get confused when when it is said system center system center is the family name okay inside system center you have other products as well and config manager is one of the products inside that now in the year 2007 they released sccm 2007 later on with multiple versions like sp1 sp2 and sp3 these are the versions released by microsoft of sccm 2007 then in the year 2012 they released this uh 2012 SCCM 2012 SP1 SP2 R2 then they stopped taking these naming convention like SP1 SP2 SP3 they are now going with year and month so they have now changed the naming convention from uh, this SP1 SP2 and now they are going with year and month so 2015 November is 1511 clear so that is how the naming convention is uh, uh, defined now they have promised releasing sccm three times a year you know uh, three versions uh, uh, every year so in the year 2016 they released these three versions 1602 1606 and 1610 these are the sccm which are released in the year 2016 we call it sccm 2016 then sccm in the year 2017 they released these three versions like 1702 
1706, 1710 in the month of February, June and October respectively. Then in the year 2018, last year, they released these three versions, 1802, 1806, 1810. Okay, now the latest version, this year they released 1902 and 19 sorry 1906 these are the versions they released this year this one is in technical preview you cannot take this in the production the only thing which you can take it in the production is this one um, prod so 1902 you can say the latest and greatest version of sccm which you can take it in the production so it started in 1994 and from 1994 now the latest and greatest version is 1902 so almost like 25 years this product is there in the market so it's a matured product it's been deployed in all big size and mid-size companies guys so <clears throat> it's in big demand i will talk about the opportunities and uh, the current uh, uh, demand of sscm and what will be the future of sscm i hope you guys understood this historical background of sscm everyone yes clear yes very good so in case if you find any difficulties to understand or any question you can stop me right there and and uh, i can explain you explain you uh, you know answer your question that's not a problem now let me go to the next slide and that is certification now microsoft uh, is taking this uh, certificate uh, microsoft has uh, uh, is conducting 70-703 that's the exam code for this sccm if you pass this exam you will get mcts microsoft certified technology uh, specialist uh, transcript um, the cost of this exam is 160 us dollar in uh, outside india and those who are in india they need to pay 4800 indian rupees uh, to microsoft to take this exam so the total marks of the exam is 1000 you need to score at least 700 to pass the exam okay so that is the exam uh, details you don't have any um, you don't have multiple paper just it's just single paper only one you have to just take this one and there is no prerequisite that you have to have uh, you know other exam uh first and then you can take it that's not it's not like that you, this is only paper and you just have to take that one and you will be uh you will be certified so okay. Kash, can, Kash, 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 how long does the certification last for this certification is expiring on 31st of de december this year 2019 so microsoft will change and give it a will let us know the new uh, ex new exam code which is superseding this one yeah but once you take the once you take the exam and pass does the certificate is it like for three years before it expires or do you have to renew it every year no 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 it will expire um, after once it is expired from microsoft so it is expiring on 31st of december it, this year so i would suggest don't take the exam now wait for six months uh, you know whatever the months remaining like five months and take another new exam the new one which is coming from that will be that will stay there for the for for the next three years okay okay all right actually one question in this examination um there is also cloud computing uh topic is integrated are we also going to cover that during our course cloud computing yes uh, the integration of uh, this thing cloud thing and uh, the azure active directory plus uh, uh, exactly. in tune they will be integrated you know they, we will be uh, doing those things as well okay perfect thank you no worries now let's talk about opportunities in sccm since you guys are going to learn this technology you should know the current market value of this product and what will be the future of this product right so sccm is currently holds 43 percent of market share in all the deployment tool there are multiple deployment tools available like ibm big fix okay then you have altris then you have land desk right multiple other products as well but sccm is leading the market right on the top 
and this holds 43 percent of market share all big size companies and mid mid size companies they have sscm wherever you go whether it is uh big size or or mid size you will definitely find sccm in small size companies you may not have sccm but most almost all big size and mid size companies will have sccm so if this is deployed with uh, this kind of uh, you know uh, deployment then the people also need sccm administrator to work on that product right so people who are working as system administrator on SCCM profile, they are earning somewhere around 45 US dollar per hour as per the statistic, right? And you have lots of opportunities uh, based on uh, Indeed and Dice website. These are the two leading job portals in US and Canada. I have not included the the job portals which are for you know European countries. So you probably you will have to search your you know. Your local uh, job portals to check the opportunities but it has um, opportunity opportunities all over the globe and uh, uh, people who are in india they can expect a salary of um, eight lakh per annum that is eight hundred thousand indian rupees per per year uh, that is the average salary for uh, for uh, sccm administrator those who are in india some may be getting 15,000, 1,500,000. Some may be getting 20, you know, uh, 200,000. Um, but this is the average salary for uh, SCM administrator. Now we'll talk about the sites in SCM. So I'm not going to go into details now. Okay. So just understand the the sites in SCCM. Um, so these these are the three sites: central administration site, primary site, and secondary site. But these two sites, central and secondary site, these are optional site. You may or may not have central and secondary, but this one is the mandatory. Without primary site you cannot manage devices this is like sorry most important one okay you have to have this so primary site is the main site in sccm which will be managing devices whatever the devices you have let's say you have 10000 devices 10000 devices primary site will be managing all those 10000 devices clear that's the sites in sccm so central and secondary these are two optional site you may or may not have it based on certain criteria you can install central and secondary but primary has to be there now what is a central administration site now you just understand central is a sec optional site in sccm and central sec central administration site is needed only because of these two criteria when you have more than 100 thousand devices to manage and when you have more than one primary site so these are the two criteria for central administration site to exist otherwise central administration site is not required okay so for sense for central administration site to exist you must have these two criteria then only central administration site is needed now it central administration site needs sql server database to store the data it does not process client data that means it is not managing any for example you have like 10000 or 100000 devices central administration site is not ma processing any data to, to the client client is not pointing to central administration site so that is what I mentioned here. Central administration site does not support any client assignment. Client are not talking to central administration sites. Simple. Client does not talk to central administration site. So that is the main uh, uh, details what you have to take it away from here. Optional. This is an optional site. You need because of these two criteria. It is. It needs SQL Server database. It does not process client data and it does not support any client assignment 
okay so these are the few things which you have to understand for now later on we will discuss about these things late um, in details but for now you understand this is an optional and because of these two criteria we need this uh, one more thing central administration site supports up to 700,000 devices if a company has um, you know uh, 700,000 devices one central administration site is capable enough to s support all the devices <clears throat> now primary site is the main site in SSCM guys without this you cannot do anything okay so it is the mandatory one as I mentioned here is the mandatory site now one primary site is capable enough to handle or support 100,000 devices that's the maximum capability of primary site whether it is 100 100 devices 1000 devices 10000 devices or 100000 devices one primary site is capable enough to handle 100000 devices if you have more than 100000 devices then then you need additional primary site one primary site is capable enough to handle 100000 devices only so it's a mandatory device mandatory site in sscm and it manages client in well connected network so basically it manages client when the clients when the computers client means what you know in every computer let's say you have 10000 devices so in every computer you need sccm client so let's say you have 10000 devices you need sccm client in every computer and through that client you the primary side can manage these computers so primary site is a mandatory one it manages client in well connected network that means all the computers which are connected on the local LAN network it can manage all the devices okay then primary site needs a SQL server database just like central administration site it also needs a SQL server database it supports client assignment this is the only site you know where the client are assigned Let's say you have 100 client, 100 computers, or 1,000, or 10,000, or 100,000. All those computers will be assigned to primary side. The primary side will be the one which will be handling, uh, which will be working on the policies and uh, uh, all the deployment process and everything to the client uh, computers. Okay, so. You need to understand a couple of things the first thing is mandate it's a mandatory one second thing is it manages client in well-connected network it needs a sql server database and it supports client this is the only site which supports client assignment and once primary site is capable enough to handle 100,000 devices now these site will be installed on windows server okay windows server similarly the central administration site whatever in the previous slide that will also be installed on windows server you cannot install that these sites on linux boxes or desktops like windows 10 or windows 7 it has to be a windows server okay i'll talk about uh, Sorry, the yes, windows sir. server of yes any version of windows server yeah, that's what I was mentioning. I, I will talk about the version of Windows Server later on. For now, you understand that it it can only be installed on Windows Server. Got it? Yeah. Now, the secondary site. What is secondary site? This is also an optional site in SCCM, just like central administration site. Now, secondary site is needed when you have devices in remote location where you have network bandwidth as a constraint you know suppose uh, you have a headquarter in new york and branch office in mexico or london or paris so to and those locations have some devices let's say 2000 devices in london 2000 devices in mexico 2000 devices in 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 Singapore so these locations are remotely connected to New York right New York is a headquarter so from New York it will not be possible to handle those devices so we need a secondary site in the branch offices when the devices are connected over the WAN network 
or we call it as uh, remote location right it needs sql express to store the data it also needs the database so all three sites needs need need database whether it is central secondary or primary but this is the only site which supports sql express the free edition of sql uh, database you don't need to purchase the sql uh, license for this sql server is free uh, free version either you go with sql express or you go with sql server database so it supports both of them but central and central and primary they support only those uh, they support only sql uh, server database mm, not this one the free one the sql express one secondary side is capable to handle 15000 devices that's the latest one previously it used to handle uh, 5000 devices but now the latest version of microsoft uh, sccm they have uh, extended the capability of a secondary site that it can manage up to 15000 devices in a remote location clear everyone so these are yes. the few points you have to understand for secondary site first is the optional second one is it is needed only when you have devices in remote location it needs a, a sql express or sql database and 15000 devices one secondary site can support okay now the maximum capability as i discussed one central administration site can support 700000 devices one primary site can support up to 100000 devices and one secondary site can support up to 15000 devices it is 5000 because it is the little old slide so previously a secondary site was supposed to handle only 5000 devices now they have increased to 15000 So that's the capability of uh, these sites. Now you need to understand this architect properly. The diagram. There are three diagrams, three architecture, uh, architectural diagram in this uh, uh, slide. One, the first one is for small size companies. The second one is for mid size companies, and the third one is for big size companies okay so in any company whether it is big size small size and uh, medium small or big size you will need to implement based on the geographical location of uh, the companies suppose if it is a big small size companies you don't have any branch offices it's just one location one building wherein all the devices are located you just need one standalone primary site to manage all the devices in Houston suppose you have you have only one location Houston and that has all the devices right so one primary site is capable enough to handle all the devices in Houston we call it as a standalone primary site now suppose you expanded your business and you become the mid-size company so Houston will be your headquarter and you expanded your business in Seattle and Boston. For example, these are the two branch offices and where in Seattle you have 1000 devices, Boston you have got like 2000 devices. Now these are remotely connected to Houston. So we need secondary site in Seattle and secondary site in Boston. And these two secondary site will be reporting to primary site. So this is when you have mid-size companies wherein you have one headquarter and multiple branch offices now the third one this one is for like ibm accenture uh, deloitte cognizant hcl the big size companies wherein you have more than 100000 devices all over the globe let's consider that you are working in a company where you have 300000 devices right 300000 devices 100,000 out of 300,000 devices 100,000 devices in Asia right another 100,000 devices in Europe and another 100,000 devices in Americas 
so there are three sorry guys i'm a little bad in this so there are 300000 devices in three continents out of those 300 i'm just giving you one example like 100000 devices in asia 100000 devices in europe and 100000 devices in americas so as we discussed that one primary site can manage up to 100000 devices so we will put a primary site in americas region primary site 1 and all the secondary site will be reporting to this primary site whatever the primary secondary site are present in americas region another primary site in europe region and whatever the secondary site you have that will be reporting to this primary site another primary site the third one in asia pacific and whatever the secondary site will be there that those will be reporting to this uh, primary site so now these are the three primary sites now when you have more than 100,000 devices, you need additional primary site. That's the reason we have added two more primary site. And central administration site to exist, we need two criteria, more than 100,000 devices and more than one primary site. So this primary site will be reporting to this central administration site. So central administration site will be sitting on the top of the hierarchy. And then you will have primary site and then secondary side which will be reporting to those respective primary sites Kashi, one question um as you mentioned here the, regarding primary and central administration is this the only the only thing which um uh, yeah segregates both of them is the continent like if i say uh, you're taking about the uh, you, you took an example of hundred thousand devices I'm taking an example of small amount of devices. Say for example, I have all in all 2,000 devices. Out of 2,000 devices, 1,800 devices are in Europe, 100 are in America, and 100 are in Asia. What type of site hierarchy would you recommend here? And do I need, okay, and do I need a, a central administration site at all, or is it even not required? Not required. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. Okay, I'm just giving you an example that in one continent you have the devices. You may be having branch offices in different continents. That's not a problem. 2000 devices, multiple location, spread out to multiple continent. One primary site is capable enough to handle all the devices all over the globe. Okay. Fine. Now the <clears throat> another slide that is central administration site it's one and the same thing when you have 200000 devices this this slide is for 200000 devices let's say one primary site one in america and primary site sorry primary site two in europe so these secondary site will be reporting to this primary site and this secondary site will be reporting to this primary site and these two primary site will be reporting to this central administration site also the secondary site which is dedicated for primary site one they cannot point to primary site two they will always be pointing to their respective uh, primary site so these secondary site will always report here they cannot report to this primary site that is not possible clear now the database replication happens from downward to upward so database replicates from secondary to primary and primary to central administration site so whatever the primary site you have and secondary site you have all the data will roll up to the central administration side database and central will be your master database so this one will be your master database wherein you will get all those information for all the sites you have uh, uh, kashyap uh, hari yes uh, what is the minimum uh, replica time for is a recommended minimum replica time that you can define yes. the the replication time is uh, set on uh, you can define every five minutes every 10 minutes every 20 minutes so based on the based on or, your uh, uh, 
uh, requirement okay, yes. okay okay yeah normally we keep yeah. it like every 10 15 minutes okay okay uh sir this is rohan uh yes, Rohi. sir how many uh like uh, secondary sites we can create under one primary is there any limitation for that uh, uh there is a limitation you have the limitation here one primary site supports up to 250 secondary site one central oh. administration site can support 25 child primary site okay so sir like uh, um, i mean like uh, if we have created multiple secondary sites and uh, and we have uh, two primary sites and uh, one primary site i'm having uh, five secondary sites and then other uh, primary site i am also having uh, five prime uh, secondary sites so uh, if i have connected all these things using uh, cas that central administration site so what mm. is the point of like uh, uh, a secondary server which is will not directly connected to the uh, uh, primary site of uh, another location so it like a primary site will have a, its own certain policy which will not replicate to another primary site okay now suppose you have a started a company called pepsi okay okay mm -hmm. now you are managing pepsi as something but tomorrow what happened uh, you purchase two companies and okay. that is one is coca-cola sorry i cannot type in properly okay, so sure. coca-cola the second one is let's say thumbs up hmm. okay these two companies so now these two are separate before it was a separate entity right coca-cola and thumbs up okay right hmm. so coca-cola was a separate company and thumbs up was a separate company so whatever the devices you have in Co thumbs up you have one primary site and they are managing all the devices uh, of thumbs up right mm. Mm. whatever the devices you have in coca-cola they are managing they you have another primary site there and that is managing all the devices there so okay. the primary site which is there in coca-cola will be handling all the devices in coca-cola the okay. primary site in uh, thumbs up will be handling all the devices in thumbs up okay. so you the, either you separately manage these devices from mm -hmm. primary site and secondary site, whatever it is, or you can put a CAS on the top, and okay. these data will be given to this central administration site, and this will be the master database. Okay. Got okay. it? It is not mandatory for you to put central administration site. You can separately manage uh, devices in thumbs up, you can separately manage devices in Coca Cola. Okay, so CAS uh, won't replicate any data from Coca Cola to Thumbs Up, right? No. So it will. It will take. Just, uh, it will take the data. Just like okay. I'll give you one example. Like uh, your manager, your mm -hmm. manager has uh, three Im subordinates, three employees under him. Uh, they are work. They are working. Three employees are working under your manager, right? Mm -hmm. Now your manager will ask one by one the information what you have done one by one take all the information from th those three people hmm. got it yeah so the p person a will not be having any information about person two person two will not be having information about person three but okay. all these information will have your manager will have the information of all these three person okay 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 i got it sir yeah. okay now the site roles there are multiple site roles in sccm and uh, i have mentioned uh, almost all of them here uh, like management point distribution point software update point fallback status point application catalog website point web service point sms provider asset intelligence endpoint protection reporting services service connection point state migration these are the site roles in sccm why we need these site roles i'll talk about these things later on but for now you understand that we have these site roles okay yeah. 
now suppose you you have a suppose you implemented sccm in your company what all things you can do from sccm the first thing is you can do asset management okay that's the um, first thing i have mentioned few points here so that you can understand properly asset management like in asset management you can do hardware and software inventory let's say you have 20000 devices or or 50,000 devices and you would like to know the hardware configuration of each and every devices software and whatever the software installed on those devices or software files you can do it from sccm you don't need to enter uh, you know you don't need to um, write those information on a piece of paper or something it will be the sccm who will scan the computers sccm client will be scanning all the computers and send the data back to the database and the database will have all the information so you can do hardware and software inventory of the devices then you can do asset intelligence asset intelligence is basically to <clears throat> categorize software suppose you have 50000 software and you would like to categorize them how would you categorize you don't need to do it manually sccm will be categorizing the software also it will help you to manage licenses suppose you purchased 100 license and uh, it will let you know how many licenses are consumed and how many licenses are uh, still available unoccupied software metering software metering is basically to calculate the utilization of software okay whether the software is being utilized in the month of july uh, you know people are using the software or not you can get the report of all the software um, you know you need to define the software meeting rule mostly we do it for licensed applications and uh, then you can get a report or monthly basis that in the month of july in the month of august what is the trend what is the utilization details of those particular software so people who are not using the licensed application properly let's say um, in the last 30 days there are few users who did not use that product at all we can remove those applications from their computers and give it to somebody who actually need those applications so that is of a meeting client management suppose you have to deploy applications you can use sccm to deploy on one app one computer or thousands and thousands of computers you can deploy it in one go or schedule the deployment so that is application management through sccm software update you can deploy patches patches are very much crucial these days as you know these are uh, you know these days there are um, uh, cyber crimes happening all over the globe you know the recent cyber crime uh, that was a uh, blue keeper you know blue keep which affected affected uh, multiple uh, millions of uh, computers all over the globe so microsoft recommends that you deploy software updates like operating system updates and application updates on monthly basis so that your computers are free from vulnerability operating system deployment is also possible through sccm you don't need a pen drive or cd disk to deploy operating system content management you can manage your contents through sccm so these are the contents you can manage these things from sccm compliance setting basically to find out how many computers are compliant and non compliant based on certain certain settings suppose if those settings are present in the computer then computer will be considered as compliant if not present then computer will be considered as non compliant so that is also possible through sccm power management for example after seven o'clock in the evening if people are not available we can turn off the monitors we can shut down the computers or put them under on, on the sleep mode or hibernate mode so that it will consume less electricity during non-peak hours and it will um, you know save electricity cost so we can do power optimization power management through this uh, sccm client health uh, sccm is basically client and server facing tool so you need to install client 
in all the computers whether it is one computer or 100 computer or 1000 computers or 10000 computers you have to have sccm client on all the computers then only you will be able to manage devices so, so I cash the... yeah so just going back to power management you said you can you can manage um monitors through sccm as well yeah we can uh, create power policy and for that policy for monitors yes oh, i wasn't aware i thought it was only for desktops okay monitor as in yeah monitor just okay. for the monitor just, no 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 wait 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 i think i'm confused now are you talking about just for the monitors or the monitor which is connected to the computer yeah the monitors connected to computers is that what you mean or you mean yes. monitoring no 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 so you, you're talking about the screen yeah the screen the hard disk of the computer the computer can go onto the okay. sleep mode hibernate mode okay so you can you can monitor um you can provide power management to monitors as well through ssem okay i yes, wasn't but aware that monitor, was... yeah but that monitor has to be connected to the computer it's not individual monitor or you know isolated monitor we can suppose there are some tv screens or monitors which are kept on the wall right we cannot monitor them until it, until unless it's, it's connected to any computer okay okay thank you okay fine so desktops and laptops and servers uh, so server normally does not have any monitor but let's desktop and laptops we can monitor the monitor or create power policy for them and whatever the policy you define it will apply those policies let's say after seven o'clock uh, nobody is there in london and uh, there are two thousand devices and i would like to turn off all the computers after seven o'clock or turn off the monitors after seven o'clock we can do so in through sscm okay okay client health uh, basically, SCCM gives you a dashboard of client uh, healthiness, whether the, com the clients are healthy or unhealthy. So you can get the information about those things. Endpoint protection. You do not need to purchase a third party software like uh, Semantic or Norton. You can go with uh, endpoint protection, which is already integrated into SCCM to deploy antivirus to your devices. And those antivirus will be installed in the computers and uh, you can start managing those devices like creating policies how the scanning will happen how the how it will detect the viruses and all uh, if it, it detects any virus how will it display how will you get, get notified and all so you can uh, deploy antivirus software to the devices okay uh, however this is not being used by any of the company i i don't i have never seen any companies uh, using this because uh, this tool is not that good as semantic and other products so mostly the companies are going with third party not with this one but that uh, that feature is present in sscm mobile device management you can manage mobile devices like in uh, android iphone ios ipad devices windows phone through this uh, sccm then you have administrative feature administrative feature is basically suppose if somebody is joining my team let's say harry joining my team and harry is uh, uh, you know is um, application uh, he is good with application deployment so i'm going to give him application deployment role if uh, if he is good with the software update deployment i'm going to give him software update deployment role so based on the expertise of the people there are few roles available in sccm the already predefined roles available we can define we can assign those roles to the people so that they will have uh, access only to the at that certain things they will not be able to uh, uh, you know manage any other things so so based on the expertise we have roles available we can also create our custom roles so that is the thing role based administration remote uh, power management sorry remote uh, management uh, basically you can remote into the users devices just like i am sharing my screen with you guys with this go to meeting application you don't need to go to meeting application if user wants to share your share their screens uh, you know while troubleshooting or something you can use sccm uh, uh, remote uh, tool 
to remote into users devices and user can share the screen with you to, for troubleshooting purpose and all reporting you get reports in in uh, PDF uh, Excel XLS Word document. So those are formats are available uh, Microsoft uh, No, sorry the reports are present in the database You can connect to the database and fetch all the reports There are like 470 default reports available. You need to connect to the report server in the database SQL server database and uh, Get your reports from there Monitoring to monitor the components of a CCM, whether it is sites or site components, you don't need extra uh, some some other product like solar wind or any other monitoring tool. You have SCCM uh, inbuilt monitoring feature is capable enough to give you the status of all the components of SCCM. Okay, so these are the features and uh, functionalities of SCCM. Uh, um, in in a nutshell, there are other features as well, but but these are the main uh, um, features and functionalities of SCCM. I hope I you guys to, um, ask. Can you manage Mac like Mac Mac MacBook Pros on SCCM or no? Is it only Windows devices? We can manage almost all the all the devices, but the management capability of Windows is more than other devices. So Windows like we can do almost everything but for Mac computers for Linux boxes for Unix for Ubuntu We will have limited uh, Management you can do you cannot do everything Okay, uh, un unlike you can do in a, in in Windows Yeah, okay, okay Now the lab setup lab is basically I am a firm believer in practical i normally don't uh, you know just run the slide and uh, it's over no i am uh, you know i uh, believe that when you do the practical and when you know the back end uh, theory knowledge then you will be able to connect the dots and you will be confident enough to do the uh, task when whatever the task is assigned to you on the practical environment so i want every one of you to set up your lab and that will be either on local computer or on microsoft azure cloud data center now for local setup suppose if you are going if you want to install sccm lab on your local computer you need to have minimum configuration like this 12 gigabyte of ram quad core processor and 300 gb of hard drive clear that's the minimum yeah requirement to set up your lab locally and if you do not have this configuration then you will go on cloud microsoft azure cloud data center now in cloud data center you just need one computer with internet connection that's it and there in the cloud we will be creating our lab setup like, like four computers and we will be connecting to these computers remotely or you can set up your lab here in the local laptop or desktop or something. Kashi, uh, your the, experience uh, guy, you know how much, uh, do, do you have an idea how much would a cloud for, with such configuration would cost approximately? I'll talk about those things later on, but for now you understand that the capability, okay. either you can set up your lab on local computer or Azure, mm -hmm. okay? Azure or AWS or uh, Google Cloud or any cloud provider. It's not only on Azure. Okay. I mean, um, why I'm taking uh, Azure because I am teaching you something related to Microsoft. You know, SCCM is Microsoft product, so that's the reason I have included this Azure. And Azure is also moving like a monster now. So if you know the Azure, uh, at least in in my uh, you know training you will also be able to understand at least the 30 percent of azure when we do the sccm training mm -hmm. okay now we will talk about the pricing thing later on but for now for now you understand the local lab either you can set up your local lab and or azure but every one of you have to do that okay i don't want anyone without the 
lab setup lab architecture will be like this we will have three windows server and one will be your domain controller another one will be a ccm primary site server and sql database and the fourth computer will be your windows 10 client computer that will be your lab architecture we can't install them in the sql server and domain control and in the same server sql server on the domain controller itself we can do that yeah. we can we, we can create one box and we can create domain controller sccm and sql server all like a sausage in one one computer but we sh we should not do that in the production environment so i am teaching okay. you based on the production environment not okay. only with the lab right yeah okay so that you can implement suppose tomorrow if you are given a task to deploy sccm in the companies mm -hmm. You can use this best practice, which is given by Microsoft, that you should okay. always separate this, uh, the, oh. these servers. Okay, and one one more uh, question. Uh, 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 what kind of a roles? I mean, we are managing in the SQL. I mean, basically. What kind of role? SCM yes, role yes. or SQL? What? No, no. What exactly? In in a SQL Server database. I mean, I'm talking about okay. in a SQL. SQL, we just need uh, three things like uh, uh, database engine service, okay. right? So that we will be able to create our database there. So database engine service, then uh, reporting services point, report service okay. and um, management tool so that we can rem connect to the database and query the database and all. I'll talk about okay. these things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any question? Anyone else? Yes, <laughs> Shakti here. Kasha, just a okay. quick question. I have no knowledge of SQL database. Do That's I not a problem. Have that? That's not a problem. Okay. okay. Question Any other question? Thank you. Are you going to go through the uh, show us the step on setting up in Azure? Because that's the method I would like to do. Yes, everything step by step. Okay. Any other question? Uh, and uh, is any pro providing any material or material kind or video rec recordings material for our future video okay. plus material and, and dumps okay. okay 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 anything else all these sessions are getting recorded you know whatever the session we will be doing as you see the current session is getting recorded so okay. after every session i'm gonna provide you the link uh, a link to download the recording uh, you record you know videos and also the material and i'm gonna create a whatsapp group uh, okay. so that um i'll be sharing all the video links and uh, all our internal communication we we will do do that on that whatsapp group uh, so my number is uh, notepad plus nine one nine eight nine two three five four three three one that's my uh, mobile number that's your that's uh, that's my whatsapp number okay now so that if you can everyone send me the high message on that particular number then i'm gonna create one whatsapp group for for everyone one and second. also yeah. i want you guys to to set up your uh, sccm related configuration let me just i think that is azure yeah now those who are enrolling this course from tomorrow onwards okay suppose uh, 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 if you would like to join from tomorrow you need to make the payment first and uh, once you enroll that okay then uh, we will go a step by step whether it is local lab or azure lab whatever it is you need to follow the steps suppose if you are this if you have decided to go on azure cloud then you need to 
follow this is step number one if you have decided to go on cloud uh, uh, sorry local lab then you need to download all these things and uh, keep it ready before tomorrow's session so that we can start from there onwards i'm going to forward this to can you send me your email address on the chat window guys um the, send me your email address there so that i can put it on the copy and paste it on this You want us to set up Azure, our Azure account and everything by before the lesson tomorrow? Yeah, just log in to Azure free trial and uh, create your account there. That will give you 30 days free trial. Okay. 30 days free trial. That's it. And in that 30 days, we can create all our resources and do everything yeah I, okay but, so i uh, received sim, email but, address but, but similar kind of i mean whatever we recommended a uh, configuration is it available in azure cloud without i mean in free account yes and yes. actually aws aws i mean i think it's not available yeah don't worry about it um just you create account in uh, azure free trial that's it and i'm gonna I guide you step by step I thought Azure free trial was for one year for 12 months. No, no, that is only for 30 days. For one year, you get certain other features. Like there are a couple of features you get, but you cannot create virtual machines and uh, and other things if in, in after after 30 days. If you have to continue, then you will have to start paying to Microsoft. OK, so for those who are going on Azure, you need to go to this Outlook dot live dot com create your new account create your uh, go to this link and create click on start free login with your account and put your details and verify your credit card details it's just for the verification not for uh, it's not going to charge you anything not now not in future until you subscribe uh, to pay as you go account for free trial you are you don't have to pay anything but it's just for the verification okay so i'm gonna send that to you Kashir, so just keep your you account ready. Sorry, what do you recommend uh, to have an Azure account too, so that in future when we when we when we do about cloud uh, integration and stuff, that we can also test it at the same time. That have like I'm planning to have a local lab, but uh, I can also have an Azure account. Yeah, yeah, you can go with with both of them, so that you can get both the exposure. Okay, thank you. Okay. But it's not mandatory. Okay, you can either go with this one or this one or both. That depends on you. You see, I've already set up on my um, local machine. Um, I've mm -hmm. used VMware Player and I've uh, created my domain controller as mm -hmm. um, one mach machine, and then I've put my SQL Server and SCCM together on the same on server. server. But obviously, I need to change that. I haven't done them separately. Okay, no worries. So you can delete those uh, server like uh, SCCM and uh, database and or uninstall. Probably deleting will be good to create fresh, right? Yeah. And uh, set up the servers like this. I have created th four computers. One is client one, the second one domain, third one is database and SCCM PS primary site like this. Is it okay to use player or do I have to use workstation? Uh, anything of your choice. I get either you go with player or workstation or Hyper-V or Oracle Virtual Box. That depends. Okay. I would suggest you. I would suggest you to go with this workstation because that gives more functionalities and features. Yeah. So I have given you the details in the mail. You have to those who are going on. 
local setup they need to perform these steps you need to download all these things and create three servers like domain database and sccm and build one windows 10 computer and i have given the links as well like vmware workstation and sql and everything you need to download them do we do that everything on a vmware workstation do we create all these things under or do we have to have them separate all of them no we have to do everything on v inside vmware workstation just like I, I you see on my computer i have vmware workstation and on vmware workstation i have created virtual machines here okay but you want us, well, I'm getting a bit confused. Do you want us to do the installation today before tomorrow and set up the, or you just want us to have no, the file want, ready? I want you to download all of them and keep the server ready. Just install the server. That's it. You know, just name the server like a fresh server, blank server, and name it as domain. Another fresh server, blank server, name it as okay. database, another blank server as okay. SCC. Just the blank server. Don't, don't to, do we any don't configuration. To, we don't have to install the SQL server, install no, 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 no. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just nothing. Install, Only get the server. Just the ready. blank server. Yeah, create three blank server. That's okay. it. Okay. Well, four. It will be four, isn't it? Oh, no, three blank server and then one client. Yeah. Yeah. Client is not required tomorrow because we will be using the client later on. But for now, only three servers are required. Okay. Okay. And then we will start creating a domain controller. We will start setting up DNS. We will start setting up SQL and primary side. So all those things will be we will be doing step by step. Okay. Clear. Yeah. Okay, guys. Any question? So far, so good. All good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. Is it? So I sent the print? email. Uh, sorry, sorry. I should have said I have one more because I've never created servers on um, Azure. Is it straightforward to do it? You don't have to create uh, servers in Azure. Oh, okay. okay. You are doing it on local, right? No, I'm doing it in Azure. Okay, so Azure, you don't have to do that because I think you have. I I think I did not explain you guys properly. Now, you, for those who are going on Azure, they just have to create Azure account. Don't don't create any servers there. Just create Azure account. That's it. Okay. Okay, and those who are going on local, the step number two, they will have to follow these steps and uh, create three blank servers. That's it. And those who are going on Azure, you don't have to do anything apart from creating an account. That's it. Okay. Okay. And even if you are not able to do it, you can send me a high message. Uh, send me a message on WhatsApp. I can guide you anytime uh, if you have any issues. And if we want to do both, both of them, is that fine? Yeah, that is also okay. Okay, that's fine. I may do both. Okay. Any other question? Hmm? No. All good? Yeah. Chandra, Harry, Rohit, Shakti. Yeah, clarified. All good. Yeah. Okay, guys. So thank you everyone for joining the session i hope the session was informative and i'm gonna send the recording to you guys if you send me a high message i'm gonna create one whatsapp group and send the details to you guys there and make sure you guys pay make the payment today those who have not made the payment okay okay thank you okay. everyone thank you bye-bye uh, yes have not got the payment where to pay where to make the payment haven't got the payment details that's one when I make the payment, it's going to take some time. Maybe you have the payment by the mid or end of next week, like Wednesday to Friday. Okay. Uh, I think I can, you, try, I can maybe uh, try. I think you can, I can, I think you can try using Western Union. Or and, PayPal? No, no. Western Union. Western Union okay. will, uh, 
will uh, you will be able to send it uh, right away or just send me the details i'll try it through yeah. some indian account i do have some indian bank accounts i'll try it but it would take some time like beginning or mid of next week okay uh fine i'll uh, ask shrinivas to to give you the details See, this okay. is what um sorry to interrupt this is what i was saying to shrinivas because PayPal would have just been easy for us international students, especially like. Okay, I have the PayPal account. Let if, you me... have, if you have a PayPal, you can send me a guest link and then I can just do it straight away. Yeah, uh, okay. but the, as I, the problem is PayPal in India do not accept money. You can't send and receive money in PayPal India. No, 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 I, no, no, I receive money from PayPal. That's not no, a problem. No, I've done it before. I've, uh, I've yeah. sent money through to people in India from PayPal. If you just send me the amount as a get, I don't have um, my PayPal account there's issues with, but if you send me a guest account, um, you just send the money and I can log in as get, I'll just send the money to you straight away through PayPal. Okay. But Western Fine. Union as well, the, the, the commissions ah. are very high, so it's a bit off-putting paying by Western Union. Okay, uh, let me let me check and and uh, reply you on e on email, right? Okay. Perfect. Yeah, no, if you can, no that'd be good. Okay, guys, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay, thank you. Bye.